And ladies and gentlemen, let's give one last cheer for the team of Priscilla and Commander Sterling, the queens of the Space Age. Vampire Survivors is great, isn't it? And I'm saying that as a completely unbiased reporter with no skin in the game whatsoever, so you know it's right. Vampire Survivors, though, is very good, and one of the things people say is so great about it is that it's addictive, which you could argue it is. I've been glued to it many, many times, staying up way too late before, going just one more crack at it, just one more run, and then I have about five more. However, there's another game I'm playing right now. I am also addicted to it. I wish I wasn't because it's shit. No, I mean, it is really, really, really bad, but it did get me thinking about addiction. A word that other YouTube videos will censor to high heaven uh, because of the algorithm and ad money and all of that being taken away if you use certain words. Even if you're, say, doing a video on addiction counselling or other mental health things, and there are certain words you just can't say, which I think is a lot more offensive than actually saying any words that some marketer has decided is a bad word to say, but that's just me. Anyway, I really do have no skin in the game when it comes to YouTube monetization or YouTube in general. I mean, it's not like we've got anything to gain. So let's just talk about addiction when it comes to video games and use the word addiction as much as possible. Addiction. By the way, you should probably go without saying, but uh, content warning for talking about addiction. Um, not just to games, but there's some minor references to like substance addiction as well. So there, there you go. I can't stop playing Eternum New World. I am, in fact, writing this very script later than I'd intended because I was glued to Eternum New World, which is literally on my TV screen right now as I type this sentence. I've poured more hours into this game than I perhaps have any other unable to stop playing it at all. Not even the release of other games, or taking a break to attend a Vampire Survivors party in London, or publishing the very game's review, which means I could be done with it, has given me enough distance for the experience to release its hold on my mind like it should. I am, in a word, addicted. I'm addicted to this game. Must be good then, right? It's gotta be if I'm, if I'm that compelled to play it, yeah? Well, well, no. Eternum New World is not a good game at all. In fact, for all of my addiction to it, Eternum New World is fucking shit. You know, I do myself no favours. I really ought to, like, go to town or something if I'm going to leave this on when trying to write a script, because, uh... Because, yeah, this will just keep happening, won't it? Yeah, I better go deal with this. Then maybe cut some trees for a bit. Maybe hunt a wolf or two. You know what? I I'll just play this for a few hours and then I'll finish the script later. Amazon's console-centric rebrand of an MMO that failed horribly when it came to PC in 2021 is absolute rubbish, and I've had to stress this fact a lot, because my inability to stop playing it might very well lead one to think it's actually entertaining in some way. Every time I've talked about this game, I've made it loudly and plainly clear that my addiction is not 
an endorsement. And the more I've reiterated that, the more I've gotten to thinking about the language we use in video game discourse. Basically, New World Eternum has demonstrated to me that maybe we ought to stop using the word addictive as a positive note of praise when we're talking about video games. Amazon has done one noteworthy thing with New World in that it's provided abject proof that an addictive game and a good game are absolutely not mutually exclusive things, even in the mind of the person who's addicted. Right, now to do the best part of the game, waiting. Outside of video games, the concept of addiction is almost never associated with positivity. After all, if I told you I was addicted to hydrocodone, would you consider that a ringing endorsement? Would an addiction to a highly controlled and controversial painkiller be taken as a recommendation? Well, no, because it's kind of a given that an addictive substance is a kind of dangerous thing. And even if it's not an inherently bad thing on its own, being addicted to it certainly is. On that note, I'm very lucky hydrocodone's banned in the United Kingdom because, uh, well, I, I couldn't recommend it. When it comes to games, however, addictive has practically become a synonym for good. It's one of those overused bywords you see when it comes to game criticism, like satisfying or compelling, and other words I try to avoid using in my reviews but end up using all the time anyway because I'm a goddamn hack. Just a look at the five-star user reviews for any number of popular releases, especially puzzle games or stuff on mobile. You'll see the word addictive or addicting come up time and time again, and I'm gonna breeze past my personal issue with the word addicting, it's a personal issue, I'll get over it. The use of the word addictive is hardly surprising in and of itself here. Some may argue that it isn't exactly wrong. Many great games are indeed hard to put down specifically because they're so damn good. Now I'm biased when it comes to Vampire Survivors having worked on it, but it is one of the many games to have nailed what we often call the just one more go factor, where you get so sucked into a satisfyingly compelling gameplay loop that you keep hanging on for one more round of enjoyment long after you planned to stop. Vampire Survivors is one of the biggest modern examples of a game being praised for how addictive it is. In fact, that's precisely what the game was designed for. To provide the exact same kind of dopamine hit as an addictive slot machine, only without all the, you know, risk of financial ruin brought about by some horrifying abuser of a company attempting to exploit your compulsive behaviour. Cough. Amazon. Cough. Amazon. Amazon. Games. Dot com. It only makes sense that people would call a game addictive as a compliment when it's so damn good they literally couldn't tear themselves away from it. I've done it myself, only recently in fact, when I found myself having endless one more goes at Starship Troopers Extraction. I fucking love that game, it's a bit of a technical shit show and it could do with some polish, but the cute base building aspect, punchy combat and hilarious piles of alien bug carcasses left in the wake of any arachnid encounter kept me going back for more. It's safe to say that I was before New World took my attention away from it, quite addicted to the game. I was certainly doing my part anyway. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part too. <laughs> I have become far more addicted to New World than I was to Starship Troopers, and yet New World is an infinitely worse game. So so much worse. I mean, sure, Starship Troopers crashed on me more times than was cool, but New World crashes so often that it's quite honestly cl- the bleh. Nah, I crashed then. It makes Bethesda games look stable, it's so prone to melting the fuck down. Hell, never mind Bethesda, Eternum New World crashes so much it makes me look stable. Do you get it? Do you get it? You know, because I'm severely mentally ill. Oh, we've had our crash. Excellent. I was wondering when one of those were gonna turn up. Like, it says something went wrong, but it happened so much I can only assume something went right, like it's part of the plan. We're talking a crash at least once every few hours, sometimes even more frequently, and that's on top of a parade of other glitches and bugs, none of which are even the funny kind, but many of which can utterly wreck the game and will require a restart. Also, the, um, I don't know if you can hear the weapon sounds, but they're fucking awful. This is a big giant axe, listen. 
Just... As far as the gameplay itself, Eternum could have been called MMO, the MMO. It's such an MMO of a game, about as MMO as an MMO could ever be. MMOing its heart out with all the MMO-ness of the MMO-iest MMOs to have ever MMO'd. To call it derivative is to fully understate exactly how lacking in originality this thing is. How dated its systems and concepts are. What an unambitious and bandwagoning also ran this fucking thing is. I could detail some of the things that define New World's core gameplay, but I could just as readily describe RuneScape or Guild Wars or any number of other MMOs that Amazon Games cynically mimicked in a bid to exploit as much money as it could out of the video game market. You haven't unlocked this skin, you need tokens. And all of this shit, all of this is fucking, um, that's their premium fucking currency just to make shit look like shit you already had. And that's the thing about Eternum New World, it's not addictive because it's good, it's addictive because it's addictive. It's coldly, calculatedly designed to be addictive, using every dirty physical trick in the all-too-well-read book. It knows exactly how to provide and withhold dopamine in the correct measure, to keep you hanging on for the next big reward while giving out just enough small rewards to keep you keen. I've spent the past week trying to get a Plague Doctor hat, I joined the right faction, then I had to level up the faction several times, and I had to make sure I was spending the currency I got from the faction enough time so I didn't hit the cap on that, and then every time I was ready to rank up in the faction, I had to make sure I was the correct XP level, and I'm finally at the level of the faction where I can get the hat, but I'm not a high enough player level. So I've spent all day grinding to be level 60, and I'm not even level 60 yet. I just want to bake. There's so much to ask. And why do I want to bake? I've got literal plague masks in real life. I don't need one in a game that I don't even like playing, but I'm just Playing. Can someone just come and put me down? Like with a gun or something. Or a hammer. Two hammers. Where a good game makes you say just one more go, Eternum's grinding economy gets you saying just a few more levels, just a couple more hours, just one more day. One day I will just stop playing the game. I won't ever pick it up again. And all of this time investment will have been for nothing. No matter how many Amrine tracker coats I make. I don't even have the reason. I don't have enough sateen for it. We already know how video games exploit addiction to make money. From arbitrary time limits to formulaic loops to outright gambling mechanics, games have done all sorts of seedy things to keep players invested in their software while they attempt to psychologically attack them into opening their wallets. Addiction has been thoroughly weaponized by the least scrupulous game developers to such a point that the entire process has been streamlined and codified to perfection. One of this series' most important episodes, The Human Cost of Predatory Video Game Monetization, not only spoke to problem shoppers and gambling addicts about how games had preyed upon them, but uncovered a now infamous talk by a CEO where he smugly detailed exactly how developers were designing their games to nurture and then financially abuse addictive behaviour in their players. See, there's a fucking playbook on how to make your games more addictive, and not for good reasons. So it isn't even an impressive or unique trait on its own, let alone positive. There's literally nothing remarkable about an addictive mobile game if the only remarkable thing is that it's addictive. You might as well just say, it's a mobile puzzle game. That's how informative you're being when you're saying it's addictive. At least for a certain kind of addiction, all you need to do is follow a scientifically exacting and morally bankrupt formula, just like Amazon did. They weren't clever, they weren't special, they just followed the instructions in a guidebook called How to Be a Complete Cunt. The other day, I had an objective to kill um, three alligators on this particular beach and skin them. Only two would spawn at a time. And it would take, I think it was like somewhere between five and ten minutes for them to respawn. Two. And the objective was three. And this is an MMO. And it took me fucking ages. And I was just playing on my... Oh, like, I was the only one on that beach. If there were other players as well... And bear in mind, right? If you can hit an enemy before it dies, it will count as a kill. But only one of you can skin it. 
I dread to think how long it might have taken me if I wasn't the only one on the beach. But I was there for fucking ages, and how is that okay? How is that okay just because it's an MMO? Like, the game is explicitly designed so there aren't enough resources for one of you, let alone an, a server's worth of players. Terrible. Fucking terrible design. I'm not saying every game can be successfully addictive. I mean, a shitty Steam asset flip is going to have a harder time than a game that has something going for it. And I'm not going to pretend that Eternum has absolutely nothing going for it. But the way in which it makes players addicted is just painting by numbers. Its addictive qualities are not an indicator of goodness. They're not good in their own way. It is, in fact, the most derivative part of an already derivative game. We need to stop using addictive as a positive trait, not just because addiction is an inherently problematic phenomenon to begin with, but because many game developers are purposefully fostering the most problematic version of addiction for financial gain. Just as easily as you could say a game's great because it's addictive, you could say a game's awful because it's addictive, and mean two totally different things. I mean, there are basically two types of addiction now, good addiction and bad addiction, and we still use the one word to describe both types. For a game like Eternum New World, being addictive is a very explicitly bad thing. But by conflating the word addictive with the word good, Amazon has essentially been given free cover by the community in the way we're using language. If addictive means good and New World is addictive, that means New World's good, right? Games have been praised for being addictive so often now that anybody simply hearing that I'm compulsively playing New World for hours could quite reasonably assume it's because I think it's brilliant. This is why I've had to urge so strongly that my addiction to New World is not an endorsement. I cannot express enough. The game is fucking terrible. I gave it a 4.5 and even that might have been too generous. It's broken. It's derivative. It's a massive waste of time and it's addictive. It's addictive in the exploitative, dangerous sense of the word. A sense of the word that we haven't linguistically differentiated yet. But trust me when I say that calling New World addictive isn't just me not endorsing it. I'm calling calling it addictive as a condemnation. What's really sad about Eternum is that if it hadn't been so calculatingly designed as a wallet extractor, there's evidence that a good game might have actually been possible. New World's combat system is about the only area that hasn't been needlessly overcomplicated and bogged down in convoluted MMO mechanics, and it's actually quite good if you ignore the hilariously terrible weapon sound effects. Every weapon feels unique, elegant, and fun to use, with even basic gear like swords and axes having access to genuinely inventive moves and skills. I fully believe that if Amazon had focused more on the combat and developed an action-adventure game instead of a cynical MMO, it would potentially have had a great video game on its hands. Yeah, it could have made a truly terrific action game. It just wouldn't have been anywhere near as addictive. Kinda weird to think about, really, that I'd have played the game so much less, and yet I'd have liked it so much more. Let's make mistakes on purpose maliciously. That's an MMO. Yes, Hale, you have limited storage, as well as your own personal encumbrance. Every town has its own storage shed, which also has its own limit. And if uh, you move all of your operations to another town and want your stuff nearer to you, uh, you would have to manually ferry all of the stuff from one storage shed to another while dealing with your encumbrance and fuck this game forever. Fuck off checking in. I keep hitting the cap on the resource you spend to fast travel, so I'm not going to register at the inn, am I? God, this game. In order to fast travel for free out of town, you have to register at the inn, but you can only register at one inn at a time. Why? How does that make the game good? How is that not just pathetically petty? Crafting fee. You get charged a small amount of money to craft and a small amount of money to sell. Because of course. Because these games spend a lot less time bug fixing than they do finding all the different ways they can normalize the idea of spending money. Oh, fuck off, mate. Normalize the concept of spending money, even if it's just in game resources, and even if it's so. even if we're talking such petty amounts of. of currency that you don't even notice it. Let's just normalize spending money. 
Dream Tinder says, A wise person once said, It's fucking sad that you can get so into a game you need to stop playing to protect yourself from it. That sounds like an incredibly um, smart, sassy, beautiful titted bitch that said that. I just don't want this industry's many abusive predators to keep making addictive products and thinking they're just as good as vampire survivors because that game is quote unquote addictive as well. We need to be able to better describe the difference between a disgusting Skinner box like FIFA Ultimate Team and a game literally opposing Skinner boxes like FIFA Ultimate Team. At best, the current use of the word confuses the two, at worst it provides active cover and justification for the Skinner box. Something can be so good you become addicted to it, but something can be so addictive it's bad, but also there's the good kind of addictive, where it's harmless, but also there's an addiction that's bad because it's harmful, and not all addictive games are bad, and not all bad games are addictive, and not all good games are addictive, and not all addictive good addictive is bad addictive good, and you know what? Maybe this video can fix the problem by just making us all completely sick to death of the word addictive. Essentially though, the concept of the addictive game is possessed of more nuance than an umbrella word can provide, and we should maybe just stop saying a game is good because it's addictive. Because no, in order for a game to be good, it has to actually be good. If New World Eternum demonstrates anything, it's that any old piece of shit can be addictive. I mean, everyone watching this should have worked that out. You're on fucking YouTube. Down to Alchemist. To even greater conflict. There it is. We can get it. I'm gonna get it. Life is officially okay. There we are. It took us three streams, but the game has been won. Scrap that. That's it. See you later, everyone. Bye. And there you have it, another presumably excellent Jimquisition in the bag. I'm gonna go now. I, I, I don't have any long-winded, lengthy final thoughts because it is literally coming up on Monday afternoon. This will have been filmed, like if you watch this when it goes up, this will have been filmed like maybe two hours before the video went up. I had a, a match in Manchester, uh, stayed at some friends overnight, stayed way longer than I thought because, well, I didn't plan to go overnight, and then came back here, passed out until it was far too late then set up everything while thinking, why, why God, why God, why am I bothering? Why am I bothering? Well, I, I think that all the time, to be honest. I'll tell you what though, the other thing I think is something you can all think, and that is, thank God, for me. I'll just keep doing this until the screen wipes over me. But I never leave enough just sort of basic footage like this, so that to allow for the credits to green screen out, like superimpose over. So that's what I'm doing now, just giving it enough of a, like I, I, sh I need to not be talking for it to work, basically.